So, I was gonna do a video reviewing the Sony a6400, but um, after using this camera, it's kind of hard to get excited about it. Um, not so much because there's nothing good about it, about this camera, there, there's, there's actually quite a few things, but um, we're living in a, in a world right now where uh, I would almost say that maybe the market's oversaturated with camera, especially like, you know, video slash photo kind of uh, hybrid cameras. There's so many out there in the market, um, that uh, I think sometimes people forget the reason why we get cameras in the first place. And uh, really, th that's kind of going to be the topic of this video is kind of why, how, and when maybe you should invest in new gear uh, and kind of, a, you know, treat it maybe sort of a, as a camera investment guide. It's it's the Sony a6400. It, I guess they were kind of aiming for this middle ground somewhere between a6300 and 6500 that they already have which there i don't really think there was a need to put a camera in between there uh, i think they should have just simply come up with a new design and that's sort of the main problem with this camera is it's i i think sony's kind of reached the limitations of what they can do with this old design uh the big thing is you know i mean just aside from how the body's designed but like this this lcd bracket and yeah now they added it so oh, whoop de doop you can kind of lift it up a little bit higher uh, so you can almost see the full screen, although the bottom of it is still being cut up, uh, cut cut off by the by the the body. And I think they they were kind of aiming maybe to get vloggers excited about this camera because it can take photos, it can take you know video, 4K video, and you can see yourself in a selfie kind of a style. But really, if if that was their aim, then I think they failed because. Uh, well, first of all, they removed one, I think, very important feature if it's going to be for vloggers, which is uh, the in-body image stabilization that it was already available on their A6500. So they removed that, and really, with the rolling shutter on this camera, if you're going to do handheld shots like this, any little shake, and it's really noticeable because on top of that, the rolling shutter just kind of adds this jello effect. So that's one big problem. Um, another problem with this flip-up screen is like, it's like, I don't know, somebody said, oh, let's make it flip up, but they don't even bother testing how it works. Basically for vlogging, you're gonna have to put a microphone because the built-in microphones are not good. Second, you put a microphone on the top, it blocks the screen. So that's kind of pointless. Now I know you can put a bracket on the bottom, put a mic off to the side, but then again, the, what's the reason of buying this camera versus some of the other cameras that already have a flip-out screen and allow you to put uh, you know the the microphones and all that stuff uh, another big problem also when it comes to audio is there's still no headphone jack and again for vloggers or anybody shooting video really with audio good thing is uh, out of focus has been improved i know people were talking about this in a lot of other videos so they improved the out of focus but it's not not to say that uh, let's say the a6500 had horrible out of focus it was plenty good for for video um, you know, if, if work, I, I still use the A6500, and that's kind of one of the reasons is uh, kind of maybe that's going to bring me to, to the overall topic of this video, which is should you buy the latest camera that comes out just because it's the latest model? Well, no, not really, and it, that's one of the reasons also why, like I said, is I, I, I can honestly tell you guys, as much as I love a lot of Sony cameras, and I own a few, I, I don't think it's worth buying this camera even if you don't own any camera and you're looking to a first camera to get I mean it's really not worth it it's 900 bucks new but now you can buy a used Sony a6500 which in my opinion is better and the only difference is it doesn't really have the flip out screen which is kind of useless like I said so just get yourself a used Sony a6500 uh, or if you want to go really cheap uh, then get a used a6300 which is very similar to this I mean pretty much identical camera Aside, maybe you know the AF maybe isn't as good, but really in video in mode, you're not going to see much of a difference, uh, and it doesn't have again the useless <laughs> flip-up screen. So, yeah, that, that's that's one of the, the the reasons why I would say is like, it's it's uh, I guess what happens with a lot of these camera companies is uh, especially the bigger ones like Sony and Canon, or whatever they have a design, they spend all this R and D money you know, developing this design and everything, and they have all this manufacturing in place. So they can just duplicate and reuse the same parts, and so they keep on reusing them and they're reduplicating them, and and they're, and so it's very hard for a big company like that to just completely ditch this design and say, hey, we need something new, something completely new. Uh, even the menu design, I mean, they, I think they should have fixed it already. So 
Yeah, so that, that's one of the reasons why I don't think you should be jumping out and buying the latest camera that comes out. Uh, f f another thing you got to keep in mind, whenever a new camera comes out, you're always paying premium. So again, they, even though this might seem like a deal, 900 bucks for a new camera, you're better off, honestly, to telling you guys, you know, if you want Sony and if you want that form factor and all that stuff, but you want better video f features, get a used A6500 because you're gonna get it for the same price if not cheaper and maybe even with some extras because you, you'll, you'll find deals like that on eBay and other places. Um, so definitely don't go buying the latest camera because you're gonna be paying premium for it. Uh, it, it like right off basically when it comes out, you know, comes out. Like when it's like a year or two years old, yeah, you can get those cameras. And a lot of these cameras, you know, they're so good now that even even if they're one or two years old, you're still you're you're able to shoot the latest quality that the industry requires. But to be honest, like you know, there's cameras that shoot 4K, and if you're doing you know or 8K, and if you're doing effects and, and certain things like that or if you're going to be really punching in reframing your shots uh then yeah the having higher resolution is going to be helpful but just getting these days a good 1080p camera is still plenty enough you can do all the professional work whether you're doing broadcast work or whether you're shooting you know wedding videos corporate videos most people don't really care or clients i should say don't care about shooting higher or, or getting the final product you know, to, to be higher than um, than 4K uh, than 1080, 4K, 8K, all that stuff. Those are kind of luxuries that allow you to do, like I said, punching and all that stuff in on your image. But um, but they're not really a necessity. If you if you're, for example, somebody who wants to get a small camera, something portable like this for home videos, but you also want to take good photos and things like that. There's plenty of options from Sony, from Canon, uh, from Fujifilm, you know, from Nikon even. Maybe Nikon is maybe not so small, but you know, there's some good options like that. Um, go, go with those cameras. Honestly, I'm going to tell you guys, you know, go with those cameras, but the older models, uh, and uh, and don't jump in on buying the latest camera just because it came out. Because there's really, honestly, way too many cameras right now in the market. There's not much of a difference also between a lot of these models. It's not like you know, like one camera really comes out and revolutionizes the, the the kind of the market. I mean, I would say that the closest thing to that is the uh, from Blackmagic, the, the Packet Cinema 4K camera. Now, it's not a stills camera, but for video, as somebody who's a casual user, but also maybe is thinking of to switching or using this for professional work, I think the Packet Cinema 4K camera is great because it has all those capabilities. It's not perfect like any camera, but it really kind of, I would say, Blackmagic kind of pushes the, you know, and, and is not afraid to completely start with a new design, which is good to know. Sony, Canon, you know, uh, all those other big brands, basically, they're they're not doing that because they're, like, again, they, they've spent m millions of dollars or you know, however much m money into, you know, the development of, of these kind of parts and the manufacturing and all that stuff so they can pump out these cameras fast. And that's one of the reasons why they're not gonna be updating that fast. But at the same time, these manufacturers need to be able to sell the, you know more cameras every year and that's how they get a lot of people is they release a new camera I every year even though there's almost no difference in it or when in some cases like in this one a lot of the good features are missing uh and uh, but they'll release it and, and people who don't know about all those details people who are just maybe casual camera you know like users or home video and things like that they walk into your best buy or whatever and uh, or look online on Amazon and they're like, oh, it's the latest model, 2019. I'm going to get this, right? Um, and that, that's the problem. That's kind of how manufacturers get a lot of people. Now, if you're a professional, I mean, like people who are working, not even in like corporate wedding video world, but people who are working in cinema, then a lot of, and I'm not talking about the indie wannabe filmmakers who like get their hands on the Red or the Airy or whatever, you know, Ursa camera for a weekend and they're like, oh my God, I'm a professional. But like people who are actively working on films, they know it, you know, they, they basically don't give a shit when a new camera like that comes out. Because, you know, even though they might use some of these small cameras on big productions, the reason is because they're going to go for what's tried and tested, not for the latest camera. Even when Red, for example, releases a new camera, which you know, they tend to release a lot more models than Airy, for example. Uh, they're not going to jump and buy the latest red camera right away and use it on a big project. Uh, they, they'll, if they'll buy it or they'll rent it and they'll kind of do tests with it and all that stuff. 
because a lot of, again, especially new cameras, and especially right cameras, they have problems with long boot up times or the cameras just hang up. And so once the cameras are released and the manufacturers get all this feedback from the users about all the problems with it, that's how they can kind of iron out all the wrinkles. Uh, but that's why, for example, like when you look at even like, you know, the most award winning films uh, in, in the last year, uh, most of them were shot on three, two, three, or some, you know, even four, five year old airy cameras. Why? Because they work. You know, there have been cameras that they were tested. And they they kind of just just they work on a production. And when you have a huge production, especially you know you know like a big Hollywood film, where the cost of the cameras is minuscule compared to even the catering or the, the talent, you know, the the cast and then the crew uh, fees and all that stuff. When you think about that, uh, for them, they don't really care about oh, having the latest camera. On it. They want a camera that's reliable because they know that they're paying for all this other you know, stuff for all the people and, and all the locations and everything and they need to make sure that every time every minute that that stuff is being rented or paid for that they're utilizing it and getting as much of it on screen when you're starting out and you're still in the world of you know hybrid dslm DS dslr cameras whichever ones you want to get into like i said you're better off get investing in a slightly older camera whether it's new or used, uh, you know, there's there's some new ones you can buy uh, that are one or two years old that have already a lot of discounts on your on Amazon, B and H, all those places. So just go scouting, look around for it, and buy something that was great a year or two years ago because you're gonna pay a lot less, uh, and you're also gonna know by that point there's gonna be whether it's me or other people releasing videos, a lot of people are gonna tell you already. Okay, this camera, like like for example, like the the Sony A6500, which I think is a better de deal than this. It's a great camera, but it has problems. And you'll you'll be able to watch, for example, like the video that I did on, about the problems with that camera, and you can kind of see already. Okay, this is the these are the good things, but these are the bad things about the camera. Now, a year or two years later, this is how much it's going to cost me to fix those issues or go get around those issues. Uh, because a lot of these problems with these cameras can be fixed or, or you know with extra accessories or just by hacking the camera things like that so those are the reasons why i would say if you're gonna buy a camera you're kind of new into this whole thing that's how you should do it now if you already own a camera maybe you own something like this uh and you're thinking okay i'm gonna go and you know and i want to kind of upgrade i want to get slightly better quality don't go and, and place money like you know now black magic just announced the earth 70 pro g2 and, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of great features, but there's also going to be some quirks when the first few cameras come out. And also, God knows when those cameras are going to be even available. So don't dump your money in a pre-order for that. Go and look for a, you know, for Ursa Mini Pro. I mean, I, I have bought recently in another Ursa Mini Pro because I found it on Amazon, uh, or no, on, on eBay for a ridiculous deal. Basically, pretty much half price from the original, and it was barely used. So I, and it came with some accessories. So I, I just got that camera, and there's amazing deals like that that you can find again. Whether it's I don't know Craigslist, a anywhere. Look look it up online. Uh, talk to other people in your area. You're gonna be able to find deals like that, and and especially when there's other people who, like let's say, own the Air 70 Pro, but then they see you know, oh the G2 has been announced. I'm gonna put my money in for that, and I'm right away putting my camera for for sale. And so they're the ones who are losing out, really, because they're going to sell their ca their camera. They're going to be waiting for the new one. When the new one finally comes in, God knows if it's not going to have any problems and things like that with it. Uh, and if it does, usually, you know, a lot of these problems can be addressed over time with firmware upgrades, but they're going to have to wait. And in that time, they're kind of frustrated and losing all this shooting time that they could be actually using their camera for something. You're going to be better off, honestly, doing, I think, what I'm doing is, which is buy the cameras when they're a couple of years old, get it at a discount, and get it and, and know that at this point you already know that most of the problems with them are going to be fixed, or you'll know how to fix them by, by looking at people's advice. And, and then you can buy those cameras cheaper, and you can get to work right away, and you can shoot more stuff. Because at the end of the day, nobody's really going to care whether you shot some you know brand new film that you did on a camera like this on a, or on a red or on a ursa mini or things like that if it's a good film it's a good film and even netflix and all those you know like i know there's some people who are like paranoid because oh it's not let's say the sony dslms are not on netflix approved list of cameras and yeah but that doesn't matter when you're doing an indie film if you do a good indie film even shot on your cell phone 
Netflix will buy the right and the rights for it if they like the, the film and they'll and they'll put it up uh, you know on on their on their website despite the fact that it wasn't shot up to their spec why because those specs are only for productions that are actually paid for by Netflix up in advance basically they hire a production company to produce a film so since the film hasn't been made yet then yes Netflix wants to make sure those production companies follow a few guidelines and if you ever get a deal like that with Netflix Trust me, guys, you're going to have enough money uh, to go and rent or buy them the latest cameras if, if that's what you want to, you know, that, that meet the specs, specifications on, on Netflix. You know, most cameras, even that are a few years old these days, are going to deliver a really great looking video. Uh, so just go out there and, and start shooting and, and get the best deal that, that you have. And if you have a camera that's maybe a little bit old, but you, like I said, you want to maybe upgrade to maybe more of a serious kind of a cinema camera. Again, you got to be aware of the fact that, uh, like, like, let's say you buy the Blackmagic Packet Cinema Camera, right? 1200 or the 1300 bucks, uh, And then you, you're like, okay, I've shot with this camera. It's great, but you know what? I need to go real pro. I'm going to go with, I don't know, jump to red. Well, red, like starting red kits, the red scarlets and all that stuff. With the, I'm saying after you buy the, the cards and the batteries, with all that stuff, which is proprietary and very expensive. After you've um, basically bought that whole package, even if it's used, used Scarlett, you know, DSM C2 kind of a package, you're still paying around thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. So ten times more than the you know brand new uh, Blackmagic uh, Packet Cinema camera. When you're jumping in from a five hundred dollar camera to let's say you know a thirteen hundred dollar Blackmagic Packet Cinema camera. There's a drastic difference there, right? Let's say, yeah, let's say the camera difference in price is two times. Yeah, you're probably gonna get two times the, the, the difference in quality. But, or, or in case of Blackmagic, I would say even, even more than that. But if you're gonna then jump from that to another 10 times more cost of a camera, like the, the Red, for example, uh, you know, Scarlett DSM C2, you're not gonna get 10 times more performance simply because you're paying 10 times more money and especially because now these entry-level cameras can deliver such Im amazing image quality is it worth for you spending 10 times more money and going into debt 10 times more or 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 even if you have that money in your bank account maybe you'd be better off you spending most of that money on on the actual locations or whatever production value of your next uh, project 10 times more money for the red scarlet doesn't mean you're going to get 10 times more quality yeah you, you'll get slightly higher resolution higher frame rates but you're not even really necessarily going to get a uh, higher bit depth uh because a lot of the, the like the, the, the even the red cameras you know a lot of times you're going to be shooting in a red codec which is pretty much the same thing as shooting in, in uh black magic uh, raw on the packet cinema camera even if you jump to like the the full-size cameras um, like the, the you know the monstro or for example if you go into Aries right and you jump into Aries which is even more expensive with a lot of the Aries forty fifty thousand dollar cameras just for the camera itself by the way uh, you're not even gonna get higher resolution because a lot of the Aries still shoot in 1080p or uh, basically yeah, slightly higher resolution but they're not gonna be shooting in, in 4k natively not for that price you're gonna be spending that much more money and in that case would be you know 50 times more than the black magic packet cinema camera but you're not going to be getting 50 times more you know increase in quality in fact the resolution is going to be lower some of the frame rate options are going to be lower uh, but you're getting you know the the, the airy look you're getting the slightly maybe uh, better dynamic range things like that but really what you're paying at the end of the day is you're paying for brand name but also reliability like for example, if you go with an Airy, even an older Airy, it's going to be a reliable camera. Uh, and if you go with a Blackmagic Packet Cinema camera, they're pretty reliable, but they have been known to kind of to break down and stuff like that. Is there still haven't been not all the, like I said, wrinkles and problems with it ha have been ironed out. A lot has been since the camera came out. There's a lot of been uh, great camera updates. But there's still problems with that camera and so i'm sure a lot of it is going to be addressed and and with the future versions of it and things like that i don't go myself and shoot with those cameras on daily basis why because they're they're big cameras they're meant for a big production so if i'm hired to work on a bigger production where i know i'm gonna have an ac you know maybe a second ac uh you know f have other people basically help out and all that stuff then i know i'm gonna i'm gonna be okay going with a bigger cinema camera package and use it but even i'll tell you guys you know like the last project i shot i shot on the ursa mini pro 
and I still actually shot a lot of the B, not B-roll, but like certain moving shots and things like that on the Packet Cinema 4K camera. And they match perfectly in editing, especially using my LUT, actually. <laughs> I released a bunch of LUTs for, they matched all the different Blackmagic cameras uh, for free. You can download from my website. But anyways, like I said, so you're, you're kind of, it, just because you're gonna have those big tools, you're not gonna use them all the time. And the problem, or the reason why, is because a lot of those cinema cameras that cost 10 times or 50 times more than you know your DSLRs, DSLMs, uh, they're much bigger cameras. They require much bigger support gear, whether it's tripods, gimbals, much bigger batteries, all that stuff. So suddenly your production gets much bigger and you can't single-handedly then carry the camera and all the accessories and things for it. So that's one of the reasons why I will tell you guys uh be aware of uh you know of those things don't think that just because you get the most expensive camera or the most the latest camera that you're gonna get suddenly that much better or your work is gonna look that much better um if you can shoot something on with the camera that you have right now you own or you have access to just go with it try to do your best job put most most of your money in in front of the camera the locations actors all that stuff that whatever is going to make your production look good and you're gonna see, you're gonna be a lot more successful doing those kind of things, doing those kinds of projects. And then when when that success and that recognition from those projects, you know, gets you bigger clients, like I said, maybe Netflix will come calling and asking you to produce their next film. Then with those budgets, you won't have to worry or think about, oh, am I gonna be shooting on the airy or this and that because this is that, but this one costs this much money. Whatever. You're just gonna go with the camera that you think is gonna be the best tool and not necessarily even bother looking at the cost because at those budget productions, the cost of the cameras, like I said, is, is tiny compared to the, the whole overall pro budget of the project. Don't get the Sony a6400. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to be one to kind of like some, you know, fanboys of Sony and stuff are going to be like, oh, Tom hates Sony. No, I, I own Sony cameras and I, you know, I, I love the a6500. I use it, whether it's some work, you know, that I'm doing like smaller productions or even home videos and things like that on my travel vlogs. That's what I what I shoot on. But like I said, uh, especially because I own that a6500, I don't think this is a great, you know, addition. It's not really an upgrade because they've taken away certain features. Uh, so there's no reason for me to spend money on this camera. And that's why I'm trying to tell you guys, don't, also don't go buying this one. Even if you're new, buy, like I said, used A6500. And also don't fall for the whole marketing tactics of, oh, new year, new camera model came out, it's gotta be better. Or this camera is 10 times more, so it's gotta be better than the camera that's thing. That's not always the case. And, and in some cases you'll see, uh, like with the Blackmagic Packet Cinema camera, I think, that camera came out and the cost of it is so much lower than many other DSLM or DSLR type of cameras that many people still they look at that camera and they're like, well, it's cheaper than the Sony a7 III or whatever, a, you know, well, whatever it is that the camera that you're looking, comparing this to. And then you're like, well, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K is cheaper. So it means it's gonna be, be you know, worse quality. No, it's actually got much better quality than some of these other expensive cameras. It's just, the manufacturers, whether it's Canon, Sony, whatever, they're not going to suddenly slash their camera prices just because Blackmagic or some other camera manufacturer released another camera that's way better and way cheaper than theirs. They're, that's just not how it works in their in their world. They know they have certain, they, they spend money on marketing. They know they have certain fan base, people who are already invested in a lot of Sony lenses, accessories, whatever it is, and they're going to stick with that line of thing um, of cameras. So that's the, the, the thing that I'll tell you guys. Now, another thing when it comes to investing, uh, that, like that was my very long guide of investing in cameras. Other types of investment of gear is uh, basically all the things you need around to work with your camera. Uh, because cameras are gonna be, you know, you're probably gonna be updating it. Uh, I, like I said, don't do it every year, but maybe every three, four years you're gonna upgrade your camera. Uh, but what you don't want to be upgrading is your lenses, your support gear, you know, gimbal, stabilizer, sticks, all that stuff, your lights. So that stuff, buy, again, not the latest thing, but just look out there at the reviews, look look for deals on used versions of these products, but buy a nice set of lenses, buy a good reliable tripod, buy a, a gimbal, you know, gimbal, maybe that's a few years old, but something that's reliable that, you know, works, doesn't have any, you know, glitches or things like that, or, or, or the glitches were addressed already. And those are things that you're going to invest in because that stuff is going to add up to probably to a lot more of a bigger cost than just the cost of the camera. But those are also the things that you should also be buying that I think that are, 
that, that, that you know you can use with different cameras. Like especially when it comes to lenses, a lot of times I'll, I'll advise people to buy, you know, don't go buy an expensive set of PL lenses or, or Sony E-mount lenses or things like that. Even though I shoot on Sony, you know, uh, DSLMs, I actually use, I have some Sony lenses, but a lot of the lenses that I use uh, are Canon EF cinema lenses. Because you buy Canon EF, it's the shortest flange distance basically, or the shortest lenses, I should actually say, flange distances on, on, the, on the EF cameras is, is bigger. But because of that, the lenses are the shortest, meaning you can stuck an adapter in the back of it and you can, I can use all of my uh, Canon EF, uh, you know, cinema lenses on Sony cameras, on Nikon cameras, on everything, I, you know, my Blackmagic packet cinema for key camera on, on, on all those all those cameras so that's the that's sort of what, how you should be looking at it it's like whatever it is that you buy kind of look at it okay can i use it with let's say the new camera or whatever it is to something else that i think of upgrading into hopefully this answers a lot of your questions if it doesn't then let me know what other questions you have in the comment section below uh and otherwise uh you know as always go to my website uh, tomantisfilms.com subscribe to my newsletter you can be notified about some of these uh, reviews that I do, or in this case, more like a rent uh, and, and, you know, career advice, filmmaking, gear advice, things like that. Uh, uh, you'll find all of that and a lot more on my website. So head on over there. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.